I've been like researching this because I really wanted to Please. get a legitimate. Um, I'm trying to get away from my nine to five. So <laughs> oh, I respect that. I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, that I would need to register the LLC with the newspaper or any newspaper company for about a month before opening a bank account. Is that true? Not necessarily true. That's true for a DBA. What's DBA, DBA? A DBA is doing business as. That's when you tell the county that you want to do business under another name in addition to the name of your LLC. So if you named your LLC, you know, Daisy's iPhone LLC, and you actually want to do business under Daisy's Credit Repair and accept money under that business name, you would go to the county and you would have them submit a public publication like in the newspaper. It has to be public somewhere. That's the weird thing about filing DBAs. They have to give the public an opportunity to find out that the name changed. I came across you on uh, TikTok. Awesome. You have a lot of insightful information. I think that's why um, sparked, I guess, our curiosity to like reach out to you. Super cool. Yeah. And I have a credit business, credit repair business that I wanted to start up. And I, I, I already filed an LLC, but I messed up because I put down my name and like my personal information under the registered agent. And I obviously don't want that on public records because I don't want to use my personal information. I was wondering, um, one, that's probably like my first question as far as should I, how do I go about removing that? And do you advise me to remove it? Good question. So are you the only person in your business? Yes. Okay, cool. And what state are you in right now? California. Okay, cool. And since you're in California, it's your own business. Um, does, is this the only LLC that you have at the moment? Yes. Okay, and you just started it? Yes. Awesome. Um, and where are you living right now? Do you have a house? Are you renting a place? Do you think you're going to move anytime soon? What do you think? I'm renting a place, yeah. But, you, uh, but you're going to be there for the foreseeable future? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I asked because um, that all those things are, are important to ask when you're talking about registered agents, because really all the registered agent is there for is to accept mail on your behalf in case you're somewhere else, Cancun, across the world. So occasionally, like the government will have to send you correspondence or mail. And that's what a registered agent's for, to have a verified uh- person that can accept the mail. And so realistically, I have, I have registered agents for all of my companies and none of them have ever given me a piece of mail. <laughs> okay very, got it. very rare it's just uh which is completely different from a mailing address uh, what happens is when we put ourselves down as a registered agent which is absolutely okay by the way you can totally do that when we put ourselves down as a registered agent when we research the business the registered agent address and name shows up so people will be able to see who your registered agent is and if you put down your own home address technically your home address is visible when you would research the company. And so that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like to be their own registered agent. So I don't know how you feel about that, but is it something you think you want to switch? Yeah, most definitely. Okay, cool. Um, I am in the same boat as you. I don't, I'm not my own registered agent. I just don't want to put my home address out there. I'd rather pay for it. So what I like to do is I use a company called Inkfile or INC file. A lot of the time, that's where uh, people will form their LLCs, their entities, and things like that. The reason I really like them is not only because they're the cheapest and fastest, and they have a nice user interface, but they also give you the option of using them as a registered agent. And uh, it's about 100 bucks a year, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so it's, it's an annual expensive. thing. Yeah, it's an annual thing. And okay. you just use their address and for your registered agent, and in case... You do get mail. They'll forward it to you. Okay. Yeah, super easy. Keeps you private. They also offer uh, virtual mailing addresses too, which is really cool. And they'll give you a, a an address in California, and they'll receive all your mail and open it, scan it, and email it to you. It allows you to keep your home address and your all your personal stuff completely separate, which is really cool. So that way you can like, you could like run your company from anywhere in the world, technically, as long as you had a digital address somewhere, a virtual address. That's neat. I would like to do that. I would like to be remote with my business. So yeah, totally. How long ago did you form the LLC? Uh, In November. In November. Okay. Yeah. Got it. The reason I bring it up is, uh, let's see, in California, it's about 90 bucks to form an LLC. It's probably what you, around what you paid. But if you want to start over um, and just go through the process with 
INC file, you'll be able to do form a LLC, get an address set up for it and a registered agent for it all in one fell swoop in like okay. one big checkout. And that's probably the best way to do it. And then just cancel your old LLC. Like if I was in your situation, that's what I would do. Trying to fix it and swap the information over can be challenging, but it can also be done. It's just easier to start over. Yeah, probably, I agree with you. Um, so then I have another question. So because I have the credit repair business, um, I wanted to open a bank account and I've seen from YouTube videos, a lot of people say, you know, not to necessarily put that in my business name, you know, that I have, a, that I do credit repair or, you know, anything in the, of that sort because banks Financial are skeptical services. to, yeah. yeah. So would you agree with that or what do you suggest? Oh, I 100% agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I've started companies. Uh, one of the companies I had was a vape case and they denied me for a bank account because it had the word vape in the name of the company. It's just silicone cases. It's not cannabis related, but it still triggered alarms and caused problems. And so I, I seriously, I dissolved that company and restarted it under another name that was more vague. And uh, when they asked what I do, I just put down manufacturing. And so for oh. you, you could put down consulting because really what you do is you teach people how to repair their credit. Right. And uh, it can absolutely be considered consulting. So or in order to use, yeah, yeah, no, no, of course. I mean, that's great. That's actually really smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as like setting up a bank account, I do know that I'm supposed to get a, what is an IN number, right? To yeah, open up the with EIN. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the EIN. How do I go by or go about obtaining that? Oh, that's a good question. So... If you were a student, you'd have the videos in the course, but I also put a video, a YouTube video out and it will show you, walk you through the process of exactly how to answer the questions so that you can get your EIN for free directly from the government. Don't pay for your oh. EIN. Yeah, it's a, it's a free thing. You basically, what you do is you take your LLC paper or you take your LLC name and you go to the government and say, Hey, I just started an LLC and I need to give it a social so I can start doing business with it. And they say, okay, what's the name of your LLC? And you tell them the name of the LLC, and then you fill out your personal information, and they assign you an EIN, an employer identification number, specifically for that LLC. And you need that EIN to go open a bank account. Can't open one without it. Okay, so that's that's like, someone also told me, sorry, I've been like researching this because I'm really wanting to Please? get a legitimate, um, I'm trying to get away from my nine to five, so. <laughs> oh, I respect that, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, that I would need to register the LLC with the newspaper or any newspaper company for about a month before opening a bank account. Is that true? Not necessarily true. That's true for a DBA. What's DBA, DBA? A DBA is doing business as. That's when you tell the county that you want to do business under another name in addition to the name of your LLC. So if you named your LLC, you know, Daisy's iPhone LLC, and you actually want to do business under Daisy's credit repair and accept money under that business name, you would go to the county and you would have them submit a public publication, like in the newspaper. It has to be public somewhere. That's the weird thing about filing DBAs. They have to give the public an opportunity to find out that the name changed. Short answer to your question is no, don't even worry about that. Okay, so I could just go straight from doing the yep. LLC to yep. doing the EIN, right? Yep. And then go yeah. To Inc. Yeah. Your process is going to be, you're going to go on ink file and you're going to fill out all your LLC paperwork. You're going to pay them to be a registered agent and get a mailing address from them. Okay. Got it. Then you're going to go get your EIN right away. You can do it right away. And then once you get your LLC paperwork back, you're going to take those two things and you're going to go to a bank and open up a business bank account with them. Okay. Got it. So there's no time period that I need to wait. Nope. You're just going to okay. need to wait for the LLC paperwork to come back from the state and ink file will send it to you probably within a week or two. Oh, that's actually really nice to know. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and then I have another thing. So how do I go about, say I were to like, I do my, you know, my first fiscal year with my business and, you know, taxes and comes about, how do the write-offs work? Like, how do I know what I would use as a write-off, what I would report as an expense? Um, does it have question. to, does it go a lot into like what I'm doing as a business? Yes and no. So basically you're gonna be operating off the calendar year from January 1st to December 31st. And yes. anytime in between that, whenever you have to spend money to make money, whenever you have to buy something for your business, hey, what's up little man? Whenever you have to buy something for your business, you're gonna use business money for it. You're gonna spend money out of the business account. 
Okay, so you're okay. going to set up the business bank account with, with either like Mercury, Blue Vine, or Chase, you know, wherever you want. And then um, once you have your business account set up, that's where you're going to be putting all the money in that comes from sales, from taking clients, and everything like that. Whenever you have to spend money to make money or spend money on your business or spend money to make sales, IRS technically defines it as whatever is necessary and ordinary. So if it's ordinary for a credit repair business to buy a laptop, then use the business account and it will be considered a write-off. So here's what I'm getting at. We spend business um, money on business expenses and we spend personal money on personal expenses. We have two separate bank accounts for it. That's the biggest thing. That's what's really gonna help. Now, a bookkeeper at the end of the year or throughout the year is gonna look at all the money you've spent out of your business account and they're gonna make sure they're all lined up in the correct categories. Office supplies, personnel expenses, you know, cost of goods, meetings, travel expenses, meals, things like that. And then your tax preparer writes all that stuff off. So it sounds kind of complicated because it can get complicated from time to time. But what I suggest you do is anything that you can justify spending money on for the business, use the business card for. And whenever it's a personal expense, use your personal money. Got it. Okay. That all seems fairly simple. There's just, it's all very black and white, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, the more organized you are, the easier everything's going to be. And if you just treat it like a real business and, and separate things and, you know, and you don't go buy like toothpaste and clothes and shoes and stuff with your business account, you're going to be okay. okay. But that begs the question, though, like, how do you get money from the business to you? Yeah. You know, how do I properly pay myself when I have an LLC of one? And so the way how do you we do, do that? that, you would write yourself a check or make a transfer. Pay myself, you Pay yourself, yeah. And then you label it in QuickBooks as an owner's draw. And then once the money's in your personal account, you can spend it. But the thing to remember, Daisy, is that if you leave money in your LLC bank account, in your business bank account, let's say you make $100,000 this year and you leave it all in your business bank account, the IRS looks at you and the business as one thing. And so they're going to make you pay taxes on that whole 100000 that you left in there. And so it's your money and it's your, it's, it's your business and your money no matter which way you look at it. We just want to get in the habit of putting it in our personal bank account before we spend it on personal expenses. What if I were to um, have a different business or, or, you know, me and my husband, we do the business together and we put it under our, our names together. Do we have to do the same thing when it comes down to transferring his money as well? Um, it depends. If you have two separate bank accounts, then yes. Okay. If you have a joint personal bank account, then no, you can just put it in your joint account. And you can both spend it. But if you're both on the LLC um, and you decide that you want to go with a local bank like Chase, you're both going to have to go down there personally to open up the bank account and any bank accounts from that point on. Every LLC member has to be present when you're opening a bank account at a local branch. Um, however, if you use an online bank like Mercury, you don't have to go in, but you'll only have to provide his uh, his documents. But I mean, you're married and in California, so the IRS looks at you as one person anyway. Okay, that's true too. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. uh, so, not the best, best way to put it. <laughs> I know, right? So like um, when you file tax at the end of the year, you'll file jointly and the LLC will show up on your Schedule C. All the income from your LLC will be on the Schedule C of you and your husband's tax return at the end of the year. Got it. Um, that was actually fairly simple. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate it. So what would, you, what would you offer, I guess, to your students? It's oh, just... yeah. I'd be happy to tell you about it. So I love hanging out with my students. It's so much fun. There's a couple hundred of them in there. And I started Vanderbilt Business School um, to teach people like basically what we talked about, but in like a structured format. So let's say you have the idea for credit repair business and you want to get started, but you just don't remember all those little things that we should have learned in school, like how to write a business plan properly and how to form an LLC and get the EIN, you know, and how to deal with ta quarterly taxes, how to hire a bookkeeper, how to file your taxes, how to make sure it's just getting done right. The back end stuff, yeah. you know, cause it can just be tedious. For example, like how do you write off your home office and your mileage and your meals and how just be smart about it. And that's why I put together the business school. It's got 50 videos in it. It's got a bunch of legal docs that come with it. And it comes with a, a, a half hour call with me too. And so we get to sit down and like go over your business and talk about it and whatever's on your mind, we can like figure it out, which is really cool. Oh, so okay. The business school is really cool. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a group of us that are all working at our own businesses and helping each other out. And it's pretty cool. I okay. enjoy it a lot. 
Yeah, no, I'm interested. That's why I'm curious to know. All right. Well, I appreciate all of your time and thank you so much for, you know, taking time out of your day to chat with me. Um, You're welcome, I'll Daisy. I'll school as well and I hope you have a great day. You do the same. Bye-bye.